That's beautiful dessert. What the hell is this? It's not just dessert. Why don't you go ahead and kick us off, though? Just so, just so we have it. All right. You gave it the clap? I did. All right. Well, hello there. I didn't give it the clap. <laughs> I I did a clap. We're all going to need a shot of penicillin after this, whether that be in the, in the dram or in the syringe. Uh, you might want to go see your doctor after this episode. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to the Savor the Burn podcast. This is probably the first video cast, or second this is a second video cast of a uh, of a of a tasty treat that uh, that oh, Miss yeah. Yeah. that Miss oh. Katie has made for us, and it's uh, it's oh. beautiful and it's made out of things. This is this is from Whole Foods. Oh, thank goodness! I was like, I don't know what's in there. So sometimes when it comes to Whole Foods, there's no there's no telling what the hell is in there. Well, this is tiramisu. That's tiramisu. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the only tiramisu I've had. Is from Cincetti's. Well, <laughs> it may not be. Yeah, you had me. You had me. I did. Rinse out my uh, Glen Cairn glass. I did. What on earth for? Well, we're 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 gonna fill them with. Well, with 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 something. Por supuesto, pero qué? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know. We love our bourbons. We do. We've had a lot of great bourbons. We have. We also have become quite fond of Irish whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. We've had uh, uh, Writer's Tears. We've mm -hmm. had Quiet Man. Writer's Tears is pretty uh, good. Was it Green Spot? Green Spot. Uh, had, yeah, uh, the, red the, the Yellow Spot. Yellow Spot. Okay. Mm -hmm. I remember it was one of the oh, spots. No, no. They, they we, have... We've had Green Spot. We have not had Yellow Spot. Yellow Spot okay. is the next level up. Okay. We have not yeah. had Yellow Spot. We've had uh, a couple different Red Breasts, haven't we? We, we had the Red Breast 12. We've had the 12 and the Cast String. And the Cast String. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we're definitely fans of uh, Irish whiskeys here on uh, just, Savor the Burn. Just off the top of your head, what's your favorite Irish whiskey that you had? If you were to think about the Green Spot, the Quiet Man, the Lombavadier. Lim yeah. Uh, uh, the, yeah. That was good. The Jameson Orange. We oh, had it, yeah, so you, yeah. you have to put that in there. Yeah. The Red Breast. Uh-huh. And anytime Riders you go Tears. out to a bar, they don't always have a good selection, but they do have Jameson. Jameson. They always so, have Jameson. So, yeah, just straight Jameson. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, don't forget the uh, Napug. Napoke 14? Napoke 14. Oh, 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 yeah, that, that was good. I thought that, that was, was scotch. That was really good. No, that, that, was, that, was, a, that was an Irish whiskey. That's an okay. Irish, Irish whiskey. Okay, I almost bought that for a friend of mine, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's not. Yeah, I remember we had to look up on uh, online what the uh, how to pronounce Napoke. We did. And that was fun. But I think you can hear that at the very <laughs> beginning of that pod, uh, that episode. Napoke. 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 <laughs> Say it again. No pug. No pug. Say it a little slower. No pug. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Anyway, so... <laughs> uh, uh, man, I don't know. Yeah, it's I, it's I'd off say, top of your head. It's just off top of my head, red breast. Okay. That's Yeah, I would, I would just say right off top of my head, I'd say red breast. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Actually, I'm pretty sure at some point... That was the at, new standard. At, at multiple times, we, we called that, this is the new standard. The new standard, yeah. The Red Breast 12 was uh, multiple, mm -hmm. multiple times called the new, the new standard of, uh, of uh, Irish whiskey for us. Okay. Okay. We've got something, got something covered up here. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. We're so in. I guess yeah, you know what it is. So it's it's got this cool case. Mm -hmm. 
You know, you know what? Also, we've come up on uh, the uh, the one year anniversary. One year anniversary. Mm-hmm. This podcast has been going for right at a year. Right at a year. To date, one year to date. Pretty darn close. Or yeah, pretty darn close. Mm-hmm. What was it? Mm-hmm. Uh, Feb Feb seventeen. Uh, somewhere in there. Yeah. All right. I figured this uh, this will make a great great one year uh, episode. All right. Well, let's see what it is. Go for it. Red Press 21. Single pot still. Look at that box. Holy smokes. How do you open it? Like that, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. That looks That looks really cool. We haven't done anything over what, 15, 18 years? Have we done a 21-year whiskey? No. I think 15 is... Uh, I think 14, actually, 14? might be. Wow. The... What does it say here? The intrigue of tropical fruit and wild berries with soft vanilla and a sherry nuttiness. In Irish whiskeys. That's beautiful. Triple distilled and matured in the finest oak casks. And that's just the bottle. Yeah. This box, look, though. Look closely at this box. The bird is different. Slightly different bird. It's full. Well, that's not just wood. That's That's got a detail on there. Yep. <laughs> it's got the magnetic clothes on it. It's got a... Uh-huh. Uh, a stopper cradle. Well, when and then when you put it in there, you, if you twist it, it locks it in place. No shit. Yep. Wow. Okay. I wonder why I was having a little bit of difficulty getting it out. Oh, and I guess that's what helps it lock uh-huh. in place. Uh-huh. Down here on the get the fuck out. Some of these people, man, they they keep redefining what they, a five is. They know what they're doing. It's like magnetic close. <laughs> I'm guessing because it closes like it like it's got a magnet somewhere. Yeah, I'm not sure where. That's incredible. 46%. So we're looking at what? What is that? 92 proof? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it says it right next to it. 92 proof. Very cool. (laughs) Very cool. What does it say here? An an expansive aroma, kind of like what it said on the bottle, from tropical notes to nuts to sun-dried fruit, soft vanilla, fleshy fruit, and sherried nuttiness with a rewarding medley of spices. A final hint of barley lingers endlessly. Endless barley. That's a bold statement, Cotton. (laughs) For those of you uh, that are fans of uh, dodgeball, (laughs) you'll get that reference. I thought I saw a pull tab on there somewhere. Well, it's kind of hard to get yeah, right there. You can barely see it. Go for it. Do it. Okay. I'll do it. Don't have to tell me twice. Ouch. Shit. My delicate fingernails. <laughs> I just broke it. See what it did? Ah, <laughs> uh, this is going to get ugly. I'll make my there, own pull yeah. tab. I thought I was going to make my own pull tab. Go at it backwards. See if that, there you go. That didn't work either. Don't yell at me. There we go. Good enough. That'll do. That'll do, pig. That's a decent pop. Natural cork. Of course it is. A dyed blue stopper. Trying to pick up this piece of aluminium. Some bitch is hard to grab. All right. All right. Well. If you had a 21 year anything? Uh, no. Don't answer I, that. I, <laughs> 
family show. <laughs> so it's uh, without even damn. pulling it to the nose, I got barley on it. But yeah, it's that uh, color. What like medium amber, maybe honey mm-hmm. gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's red breast. That's Irish whiskey all day. Yep. You that's got a, your that's, apple. That's a lot of apple. A little you bit of sherry. It. Yeah. Or, yeah, it said there was going to be sherry in there. And sherry is something that we find with our Kansas City whiskeys. Mm-hmm, Isn't it? Mm-hmm. Or is it a different one? No, it's Kansas, Kansas City. Yeah. And uh, maybe light caramel, light vanilla. You some, can smell the oak on it. Some honey. Honey? Honey? Yeah, there's something sweet on there. Probably honey. Well, shit. Happy one year, sir. Happy one year. Mmm. A lot of oak, but unoffensive. Mm-hmm. There's that barley. You know, sometimes when they put it in writing, I don't believe it anyway. But they were right. That barley shows up on the finish. That's unique. To me, that's unique for a uh, for an Irish whiskey. I don't always pick up on barley with Irish Irish whiskeys. This Irish whiskeys no. for me, they fall flat on the finish. They just disappear. A lot of them, yeah. I agree with that. This has got a light vanilla, but it's still creamy. Are you getting some pineapple? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I am or not. Maybe, maybe. Uh, if it is pineapple, it's from those god awful ninety nine bananas pineapple. <laughs> Have you had those? Those are fucking terrible. But maybe some spice cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like carrot cake without the carrot, so that's mm-hmm. spice cake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's no carrots on this. It's got legs. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-hmm. And what did we say? Ninety-two proof. Yep. Is that what we said it was? Man, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Wow, this is a this is a special occasion, Irish whiskey. Boy, was howdy. it aged in a in a sherry? Oh shit! I better get my notepad back out. Does it say anything about it being aged in a in a sherry cask? I wonder what gives it that sherry. That sherry uh, quality, that sherry note. Because if that's not on there and it just shows up on its own, that's pretty pretty damn unique. Let's see what we got here. About. Red Rest 21 has been called a masterpiece by a few big names in the whiskey business. They take the wonderful base spirit and hand it to a Jedi (laughs) who uses the Force and other magic to transform it. Did they really put that shit on there? Okay, so that's Flavier talking. Yeah, that's Flavier. Okay. (laughs) They use the Force and other magic to transform it into one of the best, if not the best, Irish whiskeys. We've had the pleasure of tasting. It says 21 years... And first fill sherry and bourbon casks. And bourbon. Wow. Okay. First if fill? you're yet unfamiliar with Red Rest, this one makes for a great introduction. Shit, if you're introduced to Red Bruce with You're going to be ruined. You're going to be ruined. Yeah. Nothing else is going to. Yeah. Happen. Right. This is. All right. So for me, this would not be a standard whiskey. This would not be the new standard, so to speak. This would be. This would be just something special to like surprise your friends with that are fans of red breast. Like surprise. you like red breast, huh? <laughs> Have I got something for you? <laughs> oh man. Oops.
It's, yeah, that's wild. It's got cherry on the finish, which is something I love about Kansas City whiskey. The finish is very smooth and custardy. Yeah, you don't, you don't really get that with a lot of Irish whiskeys. Like I said earlier, the Irish whiskeys are generally uh, quick on the finish, and they're uh, they're they're usually tasty with the apple on the on the nose and apple mm-hmm. on the palate. Mm-hmm. Maybe some oakiness. It's usually hot enough to to be real bitey on the proof. This isn't bitey on the proof. No, but it's only ninety two. That's only. <laughs> now, when you when you did your, I haven't written down any of my numbers yet, but when you did yours, did you? Uh, actually, when it comes to all, I don't think this is something I've asked. When it comes to your ratings, do you rate them as per cal- uh, per category, or do you rate them as standalone? Like uh, I'm Irish rating it standalone. I'm okay. rating this as in this is what I'm drinking. That's how I rate. Yeah. All of my stuff. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't say like for an Irish whiskey. I would give this a seven. I would give this a. You know, eight and a half. You know that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, just like, just overall, this is yeah. Uh, you know, a fucking eight and a half or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about in length over the. It the, almost doesn't hit. Sorry to interrupt, but no, it almost sorry. doesn't hit. Uh, hit like the hit like an Irish whiskey on the nose. Right, Irish, right. Irish whiskeys on the nose are generally jarring. It's just like, yep. fuck, let's you fight. You want to fight? <laughs> 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 yeah. So we've talked in length o- over the last year ab- about Flavier. <clears throat> and, yep. one, and one of the things I love about Flavier, uh, aside from having access to a lot of things that you may not be able to find or just can't find locally, is I love that they have a very thorough flavor spiral, Mm -hmm. a little visual spiral of all the flavors. They do a full um, review, nose, palate, finish of all those. But then they also give you a lot of tidbits on the distillery and the specific offering. And then on, not all of their uh, bottles that they have on their site. But every once in a while, you'll find a little section called Smart Ass Corner. Mm. <laughs> and this one says, Single pot still whiskey is rather unique, and only a handful of Irish whiskey shops still distill in this fashion. True story. Oddly, the term has nothing to do with the still itself. It's much like a single malt whiskey, but it uses a combination of both malted and unmalted barley in the mash. And where a single malt whiskey is usually distilled twice, single pot still whiskey is usually distilled three times, making the whiskey taste a little earthier and bringing out the flavor of orchard fruits. Okay, so orchard fruits, I put down on the palate apricot slash stone fruit. Like, Mm -hmm. it does have a little bit of an apricot. And other things that we would find in an orchard are apple, and we definitely had apple. I uh, uh, I put creamy down on all three parts of the of the of my of my taste. Very notes. much, because it much seems so. to me like there's just it's they they nailed that. Yeah. And I love how the 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 bird like we talked about this in the first. Um, we did Irish whiskey episode with Red Rest Twelve. How every offering from Has Red Rest slightly Rest, different, slightly different. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, showing or whatever of the bird on their on their logo. I also wanted to point out, which you actually already caught it. Yeah. But I mean, look at that that detail. detail. And that shows up on the inside flap uh-huh. here. 
Like over here, I saw it. Yep. Yeah. I it's mean, like velvet here. Got I mean, it. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what kind of wood this is, but this is very much so a hardwood. It's, you think so? I thought it's probably pine, just because it's something that they need to, you know, mass produce. But no, maybe that, it's not. No, that's a hardwood. That's that's a walnut or a cherry or or something. I mean, I mean, if you feel that, that that is a hardwood. That is. And then yeah, they, the the bottom of it, they've routed out so the bottle seats down in there, mm -hmm. and then it's got the little divot, so that the bottom of the bottle, mo most bottles have have the little, the little divot in the bottom of it to kind of mark where the center of the bottle is. Mm -hmm. It has that to, to hold it in place. And then once you do that, when you pop it in the top of it, it locks it in there, so it's not going anywhere. It's it's solid. And then yeah, mm -hmm. that is definitely a magnet. Yeah, I mean, listen to that. Yeah, I mean that locks in pretty tight. It's got the nice radius top to there. It's got mm -hmm. the single pot still. Yeah, it has a cool little medallion logo up there on the top. I don't. I don't know that I've seen that on regular. The bottom side of it, the wood rest. is ha, ha, has the has, has the little contoured. contoured arc to it. So I mean, just uh, yeah, that's an absolute five for. I mean, we're, we're we in haven't gotten there. We're in love with the Booker's presentation, but right. this puts Booker's to shame. <laughs> in my, know, in, my, opinion, mean, in my opinion, in my opinion, Booker says that sliding glass window. It's got the net cradle like that one does. Well, actually, that one's got the stopper cradle. Um, Booker's has a net cradle. Um, it doesn't have the the cam lock, the bottle lock to lock into place. So, but that's it's got it, 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 But has. it's got the you know the Booker's has the the, the neck. Mm -hmm. uh, little piece to, to uh, kind of hold it in place. Booker's has dipped in wax, black wax. It which does, I, yep. which I, I, you know, black. You know, it's very metal. This is also part of the Jim Beam family. <laughs> There's always That's that. A... <laughs> There's always Jim Beam. This this has the the shrink wrapped aluminum mm -hmm. that that you uh... violated to get off of there. <laughs> Natural cork, which I don't think Jim Beam had. Did it in the no, Booker's? It's composite. Yep. Yeah. Which I prefer, the natural cork. You know, it's got the embossed lettering on the on the on the glass bottle. A good punt. Mm-hmm. A slight, you know, it's it's got that 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 silverish blue. Yeah, that matches band. the neck, and kind of the bottle topper. And that's and the, the thing, box. you know, w w you with know. all of these, they have the same label. Yeah, it's, the, it's a different bird. Kind of frayed edges there, and on then the, and then a different color. Yeah, and all that. Now the the story on this was I actually mm. I, I had I had all intention to do the twenty seven, which comes in the red, the velvet red bottle. But the prices started to do some ridiculous things. They do that. They um, do that. And Flavier I, can be a bit of a a second market motherfucker. I, I stumbled upon sometimes. I stumbled upon this one. Way, way under the normal price. Way and under? Way under. Good. So I got it for a great price. And comparing the flavor spirals and, and the tasting notes mm -hmm. and, and reviews, this one just felt like a better, not only a better buy, but a better pour in comparison. So... That's that's what, how I landed with the twenty one and twenty one is no chump. Single pot still Irish whiskey. Single pot still Irish whiskey. Highly awarded and critically acclaimed, acclaimed <laughs> whiskey talk. Acclaimed. <laughs> Red Press twenty one is a single pot still Irish whiskey comprising exclusively of pot still whiskeys, which have been triple distilled and matured in the finest oak casks for no less than 21 years. 
And uh, here on the back label, it goes on to say nose. Oh, cool. It gives you... Wow. Okay. So it gives you um, tasting notes on the back here. Oh, cool. Read them. Uh, yeah. It doesn't say... Let me read the rest of the front label here. With a steadfast spirit, Red Breast has proudly carried on the tradition of single pot still Irish whiskey since 1912. That's a long time. And is celebrated as the definitive expression of uniquely Irish style of this uni uniquely Irish style of whiskey. And I would agree with that because since, you know, our... That was our first group of mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. of episodes with Mitch uh, in, uh, involving Irish whiskeys, um, and that was St. Patty's. Yeah, the, the St. Patty. What that was the St. Patty's episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, our week. Okay, our, yeah, the, the week, the whole week. Yeah, yeah, multiple yeah. episodes. And that was, uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that because that it, the Red Breast became our new standard. Yep. Period of uh, of Irish whiskey, and we had Quiet Man. We had uh, Limavati. Limavati. Uh, Green Spot. Uh, we both get confused sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird how they just have the, the spot whiskeys, yep. Irish whiskeys. But they're all the same. There's different colors yep. that, you know, I deal with colors every day. Being Green Spot, Yellow Spot, Red Spot. Yeah. I think there's a Blue Spot. Yeah. And their fan base knows exactly what all those different spots mean. Mm -hmm. But we had Green Spot, and it was decent. It was decent. Yeah. But, yeah, so Red Breast became the, uh, the new... The new standard. And yeah, we went over there with what three or two, three, different, three different Irish whiskeys. But Mitch had another plan. <laughs> yeah, Mitch had a plan that involved. Mitch had his uh, own plan. Mitch had, uh, yeah, he had his own three, three whiskeys to add to the mix. And we're like, it's content. Everything is content. Let's roll because we're using the Gary V approach. Like everything was. Uh, he had three let's Irish. Go. He had three Irish whiskeys, but then he was like, oh yeah. You need to try this one too. Devil's River. Devil's River. Devil's River. That bourbon. was not an Irish whiskey. It was not. That it was, was not. a straight up bourbon. Yeah, unless <laughs> unless you consider Irish whiskey the poor as being that's the Devil's River. That no, no, that was a bourbon. That was a bourbon. So on the back here on the nose notes, it says I should dock them on points for being so small. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not a size queen. Nose. <laughs> Remote, remarkable aromas uh, spanning fresh tropical fruits, nuts, and rich dried fruit. Uh, taste, soft vanilla, toasted oak. I tasted the oak. I, yep, yep. I, I couldn't tell you if it was toasted or not. Uh, I need more experience, I think. Uh, sherry nuttiness with yep. a uh, dusting of spices. We picked up on the spices. I don't think either one of us said anything about nuttiness. Did you? Uh, I didn't say anything about nuttiness. Thinking back on it, yeah, 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 like walnut ish, probably. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, luscious, fleshy fruit notes, uh, complete the silky mouth feel. It was, you know, what we called it creamy. Silky mm -hmm. could be another word for creamy, sure, probably. Uh, the finish, uh, lingers. I totally agree. Oh. I wrote down, uh, spicy and long. Uh, but not overpowering. Uh, here on the bottle it says, uh, Finish lingers seemingly forever with oak <laughs> and an assortment of spices. And then the final bow from barley where it all began. So it began as a, as a, as a barley forward. There you go. Irish whiskey. Yeah, I, and you, I don't know you why got I didn't that, write You this got down. that right before we even got to the nose. Right. That was pre-nose. Yeah. So all that to say, though, if we assume this was bottled in twenty three, oh uh, yeah, that means this went into the barrel in O two. <laughs> what were you doing in O two? I was not drinking a lot of whiskey. You weren't? No. Okay. Uh, o two. I mean, I. I had my son. I was waiting on my. I was getting drunk. It'd be another but, year before I'm getting drunk. I wasn't savoring anything though. Okay. Yeah. You were. You <laughs> that's were, that's what I'm saying. You were tolerating the burn. <laughs> right. <laughs> Get it over with. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. I'm drinking lots of beer. What band were you in in '02? I gotta think. 
Uh, that was pre one degree difference because well, actually, O two is when a one degree difference started. Oh, okay. Before that was at the uh, not the church band, but you guys were in a band at a church. You were practicing. That was a few years before that. That okay. was back right. in mid mid late nineties. Okay. But yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm trying to think, man. So O two. Oh shit. Okay. So O two was probably pre severed path, pre calloused. It was it was probably only Sabbath Disciples, the Black Sabbath okay. cover band for me. Yeah, we uh, we rocked the shit out of that Black Sabbath stuff. I liked it. I see you sniffing your empty glass. This mine's it, pretty much empty. It has a lot to offer. A lot of times on the um, on the empty glass, I'll find notes of of cereal mm-hmm. like we've talked before. Uh, I'm not picking that up on this one. No, but the I'll nut the nuttiest. The nuttiness may be there. Wait, do we still have our ramekins of uh, beans? Got this shirt at the uh, at the Chimera twenty year uh, anniversary celebration. It's pretty badass. Of uh, of the impossibility of reason album. It was just like it was an evening with uh, two nights only in uh, in uh, Cleveland, Ohio? Ohio. Yeah, yeah. I forgot the name of the theater, but man, it was it was a ball. So we went to the Saturday night show because it had Ringworm there, and uh, oh. also a fellow Cleveland. Was that the uh, second show? Band. Yeah, second show. It was it was everything I wanted it to be, and and then so. For I was disappointed in the crowd because they didn't respond to Ringworm the way I wanted them to, because. Um, uh, Into Existence had a show with Ringworm uh, at the Granada years ago. Oh, nice. And, uh, well, it was with... Who the fuck was, oh, it was with Unearth, and they came They came with Ringworm. So it was... Has Burn the Gates played with Unearth? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. I thought, I thought Burn the Gates had. It was before me, of course, but... So far since I've joined the band, there's been September morning... There's been, you know what? In, in all honesty, September morning was way better than I thought they were gonna be. Because I looked up their their stuff on YouTube, and I'm like, really? Why did we get on this bill? I mean, there's, yeah. I mean, there's, you know, it's not chick rock, so to speak, but it's they were, you know, they're decent. They're not bad, but I mean, they're no, they're no Lacuna Coil. They're no. Uh, Do you remember their sound check though? Uh, no, I wasn't there at the sound check. You were there at the sound check, and you said. One of the members flipped their shit. One of the members pulled full fucking diva status and blamed what the drummer it's definitely on a diva their status on their. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to keep it. Vague. I'm not saying anything, <laughs> to, but you're saying something. <laughs> Did you hear a male voice? Was that your neighbor telling us to shut up? It was Ozzy. It was Ozzy. It was Ozzy. Yeah. He said with crooked eyes, Ozzy. Yeah, do you need these? Yeah, there that's right. I wanted to hit that before I went back into the into He's, nose of the empty ramekin here. I think I need to replace these. Yeah, we've, we've been rocking these things for at least, what, eight months? <laughs> Not quite that long. They still work because we keep them covered. Mm-hmm. We shake them when we use them. Oh shit! Okay. There's a little bit of nuttiness to that. There is, and that cherry comes forward more. That is so fucking crazy. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. <laughs> Whiskey. All right. So I, I saw you brought out the three bottles. What's that about? The brand. Yeah, like we talked about before, the brand shows the different. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, the the different bird position the 12 year which is their stand that's a cool thing you know uh i mean there's there's so with there's so many whiskeys out there that have no age statement or you know or even a 4 year bottle and bond or yeah. 7 year or mm-hmm. 10 year or whatever redbreast standard offering 
their their entry level offering, if you will, mm -hmm. is a twelve year age statement. And then you have you their cask strength, mm -hmm. which is basically this, just Un not undiluted. Yep, not proofed down, just right from the barrel. What was that? The proof on that one? Uh, it's been it's been a minute. Since yeah, that one is. Oh come on, it's got to be yeah, on it's here, somewhere. Right here somewhere. Yeah, right there. Fifty-eight point one. So sixteen proof. One sixteen point two. Yep. Is that what that says? Wow. All right. All right. And the original was eighty. Yeah, eighty proof. Eighty. Okay. Yeah. That's a little bit. Oh lower. wow, that was really low. Holy. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a whole lot left on that one. Maybe time to just to go ahead and kill that one. Yeah, kill it and get a new bottle. <laughs> Make yourself a uh, what? What was that? That cocktail we made with it. Uh, Saint uh, Bow Street Smash. Oh, that was the uh, that was the Jameson Orange. Okay, you think that would work? The with cocktail the red we rice? the cocktail we made with this one would have been the. There we go, Brotherhood. Okay, okay. I guess I could have gone to savertheburn.com. dot com. Yeah, you could go. To the <laughs> the okay. be Benedictine. The Benedictine and the Contro. Mm hmm. Okay, because that was the first time and only time I think that we used anything involving Benedictine. Yep, and that was the uh, the herbal kind of liqueur. Mm-hmm. Where were we? I have no idea. So we this, didn't this we didn't line. ask we didn't ask I did did you ask I didn't see if you asked oh no the uh, whiskey tribe and the uh, Kansas City whiskey. No, Guild. I've been I've been mums the word. You've been mums. The Word. All right. Cool. Cool. Well, um, so we have no no outside input as far as uh, uh, socials go as to what everybody thinks of this. We'll have to do a post poll. Yeah, a post post. Post post. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fine. It still smells great. It's just empty. Would you give it on the nose? On the nose, I give it a four even. Let's see what I gave it. I picked up the apple, the caramel, the, the spice cake, uh, a creaminess. I might have picked up, uh, actually, I, I picked up on the barley way before I got to, to even pick it up. So I should put I should put barley down here. And uh, what I didn't put was the, um, uh, the sherry. I didn't mm. put the sherry mm -hmm. until the finish. So I don't remember if I even picked that up on the nose. Uh, what did you give it? I gave it four and three quarter. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. My, how the turns have tabled. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't see my arms flapping around, but whatever. Anyway, so... uh He's out of water. Yeah, okay. So, so on the nose, you picked up... You did pick up more on the nose, I think, on the... On the uh, when yeah. we were calling out the different flavors on there than I did, and that just you know that's that's a personal preference thing. Um, uh, on the new, uh, for me it was it was still way better than average uh, because um, um, it there was nothing there was nothing basic there's nothing nothing average about this twenty one year red breast. Uh, so that's why I gave it a four. Uh, you gave it a four and three quarter because it wowed you. It must have wowed you. It did. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, the, what was it about the the, the vanilla? Uh, the vanilla. The vanilla the, jumped out at the, you. The green apple. Uh, the yeah, I guess I should write down green apple because it's never mm -hmm, red apple. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just for my notes here. And I picked up on the pineapple. On the nose. pineapple, you picked up on pineapple on the mm -hmm. nose. Wow. I, I didn't pick up on the pineapple on really any of it, unless it was d during the palate, and it was um, like the 99 Bananas version of pineapple. <laughs> uh, and that was only because I, I forced myself to downgrade it mentally and let that thought in. But uh, that's just that. But uh, speaking of the palate, I gave it a four and a half. I gave it a four and a half. See, I was hoping at some point... 
after reading that three quarter point spread, I was like, fuck, I really hope we meet somewhere. So we, we met on the palate. So on the palate, we, we both picked up the spice cake, the oak. Uh, I picked up on some apricot stone fruit kind of mm-hmm. thing happening mm-hmm. there. Um, it was creamy. Uh, I picked up on a little bit of a, a peppery kind of thing going on with the with the with the ethanol part of it. It was it wasn't just that it was uh, alcohol ethanol thing happening. It, there was a bit of a pepperiness to it mm-hmm. to me, mm-hmm. and I don't think it was rye. I think it was something else. I don't know what. Something other than the barley. Is is barley peppery? Maybe I was picking it up on the on the barley, but I just misdiagnosed it as uh, as uh, as as peppery. Yeah, that could very well be because barley is on my nose and on my mm. finish. <laughs> so maybe, whoops! I'll write that down here and put a question mark next to it. Speaking of, what did you give it on the finish? A four and a half. I gave it four and three quarters. Four and three quarter. All right. Well, uh, we're a quarter point off. I like the finish on this. It finished nice. It, I mean, it, it, it I was. Too. It was really good. It wasn't overly warm. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. It didn't have any burn to it. But mm-hmm. all those flavors just kind of just very slowly tapered off. Yeah, it, it was. A, it was a very slow long, taper. Long finish, like you said. Really, really no burn, especially when you got to the finish, which mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. you know as you would expect, um, unless it's rot gut whiskey and it's fucking <laughs> burning your gullet all the way down and it's fighting it's fighting you the whole way if it's oh conor mcgregor's uh, proper 12 sometimes <laughs> it'll hit me the wrong way and i'll be like i'm down for the count but um yeah i think quiet man didn't really do that to me mm-hmm. uh what was another one two gingers two gingers will i still have not had that one two gingers will not sit right with me more often than mm. not, but I made it through the whole bottle, so it wasn't terrible. So uh, on the finish for me, I gave it a uh, a four and a half, like I like I said. Mm-hmm. But uh, I really liked it because of the sherry, uh, the sherry that flavor that came yep. through. And you said it 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 the first barrels that it comes in contact with was the sherry, the sherry and, a, and, and a, bourbon and an ex bourbon. Mm-hmm. That's that's really cool. I wonder who's bourbon. That's a great question. Because, I mean, I don't know how many times we've gone over bourbons here on on the on the course of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Every bourbon is unique. Every bourbon, even the yep. from from Navigator to Booker's, to you know from Bakers to uh, what? Blanton's. Blanton's from yeah. Stag. From stag, I mean, antique one hundred and seven. Everybody's everybody's different, so mm-hmm. I really do wonder. Like, I mean, it, it it's not going to be fucking Devil's River bourbon, right? Cast, so it's somebody's. I just you know, just the nerd in me just kind of wants to know, just to mm-hmm. just to know. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I picked up on the sherry. Uh, the for me, the finish was spicy and long, uh, mm-hmm. not overpowering mm-hmm. in any way with the spiciness. Uh, it was creamy. There was barley. Um, the sweetness I couldn't really lock down. You mentioned honey, uh, mm-hmm. I think. I no, did. I didn't. I didn't write that down on the palate. Yes. Or was it, yes. Or, or on was the palate. Yep. Anyway, whatever. Actually, I need that. So anyway, so that that's where I was at with that. Uh, how about bottle presentation? This was a five all day long. Absolutely, yeah. The, this box, it's not only a wooden box. Mm-hmm. It the craftsmanship on this box is. There was more attention to detail than I think you and I both put together. Yeah. I understand. mean, it's because like we it's we so still don't fantastic. understand where the hell the magnets are. No, where I, did they hide the magnets? There's clearly some magnets in there somewhere. It's one solid piece. Where are you? <laughs> like there's no clear and look like unless this is one solid magnet strip, but there's not enough there. Well, it, and then it, where it would they be, hide it in the fucking wood? That might be a, a metal strip right there, but it just it it looks like that would be the paper 
like paper laying on top of paper. Yeah, maybe. There's yeah. not there's not enough thickness there going on. Maybe it's. But but it definitely I, yeah. It it like seals closed. The Irish have their ways of making magic yeah. happen, and they they made it happen with red breast. It, it's 21. a hardwood. It's I mean everything. As much as I love the Booker's boxes, yeah, they are they are just. It's not poor craftsmanship, but they are just nailed together. This is glued, clamped, sanded, smooth, mm-hmm. oiled, stained, whatever. It is a very, very artful, finished product. So, I gave it a five. Yeah. Uh, so did I. So did I. I mean, there's, there's no, there's no way of getting around what what a five rating goes as far as bottle presentation goes. This is it. Um, so that brought my final score to nine even. Mine came to nine and a half. Okay, so I was worried that our that our point spread was going to be wider, but I mean, just because I don't know why I worry about that kind of thing. It makes but- it a nine all day long. You it, know what? By the time I add this it, to the no, website, uh huh, this will show up in our in our top ten. Okay, yeah, and probably our individual top fours. Yeah, yeah, I I, uh, I really don't doubt that because th- this w- was truly a a delight. I mean, I said uh, down here at the bottom, uh, the Irish have their way of making magic happen, and magic has happened with the Red Breast Twenty One. Yeah. Do you have any final thoughts? So good. So, so good. good. I'll just write that down here. Hang on. So. And we have empty glasses, but here's the year two. Here's the year two. <laughs> uh, so we didn't do an opening on this. Yeah, we did. We did? I made you do one. You fucker. You tricked me! I <laughs> gotcha! Stupid whiskey. Alright, well, thank you, uh, dear supporter of the... I don't know what to say now. Ever since we, we flipped a video, I, I'm just not... I, I can't call him dear listener. I can't call him dear viewer because well, people still listen to the still audio listening, only. Though. They are listening. And... I don't know. I don't know. I, we'll we'll figure it out one day. We'll we'll figure it out. So thank you for uh, supporting the Savor the Burn podcast. Again, my name is Jonathan. This is Mister W Two. Send us an email info at savortheburn dot com. Send this guy an email W Two at savortheburn dot com. Send this guy an email Jonathan J O N A T H A N at savortheburn dot com. And uh, once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for Thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, checking out uh, the shop yeah. at uh, at savortheburn.com. And uh, always, I mean, no matter what you're drinking, no matter what you're drinking, who you're drinking it with, never forget to keep, keep on, on burning. burning.